do this. Gentlemen, welcome back to Forward Assist, where I may not be the YouTuber that you deserve, but perhaps I could be the YouTuber that you need right now. Today, we're going to be taking a first look at this awesome looking suppressor that you see right here. This is the Anechoic 223 can. I am very excited to give you guys a first look at this thing. Anechoic did send it out to me um, for review. So thank you to Miranda and the rest of the people at Anechoic. I do have an affiliate link for them in the description below if you'd like to pick one up. It helps me out. However, gentlemen, as always, it is not going to influence my review. They are not paying me anything. If you guys buy one with my link, great. If you don't, that's also great. I'm not going to say anything about this can that I don't truly believe. So that is my promise to you as always, gentlemen. So what we're going to do here today is take a first look at this can as we always do. The reason I do that, if you're new to the channel, is that suppressor reviews do take a while. Um, I try to shoot each suppressor that I have generally on, depending on the, the bore diameter, this one will probably get shot on at least three or four different rifles, um, potentially more. So I do try very hard to do a thorough review, and that obviously takes time, it takes ammo, which is money. So these reviews take a minute, and that's why I put out a first look so you guys can kind of see what I'm up to and can follow me along on the journey, if you will. If you follow me on Instagram or if you subscribe to the channel here, I do often post shorts. And if you've been subscribed, you may have seen some of the shorts that um, were clips from today's video. So uh, if you guys want to stay up to date on all the stuff that I'm doing, check me out on Instagram and, of course, here. So without further ado, gentlemen, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you guys my first shots through the Anechoic 223. Then we'll have a quick debrief on that, followed by a close-up look at the can itself, because this is a pretty cool, interesting can. I think you guys are going to enjoy taking a close-up at it. Now let's see how the back pressure is. Not too shabby. All right, we're back, gentlemen. As you guys know, I try to give you guys pretty um, stream of consciousness type thoughts on what I'm thinking when I shoot one of these things for the first time. Uh, when it comes to the Anacoic here, I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of blowback. It is a low back pressure suppressor. It is not a true flow through, but it is a low back pressure can, and that definitely played out. This rifle here is a totally stock Geisley Super Duty. It doesn't have any kind of tuning. It's exactly um, as it came from the factory as far as the gas system, buffer, and bolt carrier group go. So the only thing I've changed on this thing is you know the optics and whatever and the furniture. And uh, the only thing that I've added that would do anything uh, at all with the gas would be this Radian LT charging handle. That can block a little bit of gas. They're certainly better than nothing uh, or a mil spec, but they are not the ultimate in gas busing charging handles. So all that to say, this is a very neutral host, which is why I wanted to take my first shots with this rifle because it's not uh, dedicated as a suppressed rifle uh, setup. We're going to do some videos on that, so stay tuned if you guys um, want to check those out. But this is a plain Jane rifle that runs very smoothly with uh, no can on it at all. And obviously with this can runs very smoothly also. Hand in hand with the low back pressure was the fact that the suppressor is a little bit louder than some traditional cans. Um, I think that's probably due to, as I said, the low back pressure as well as the vented end cap, which again contributes to that lower back pressure. 
Um, it's also overboard on that end cap, as we'll see. So what that does is it keeps you from getting that gas back in your face, but it does make the can a little bit louder. Now, it's by no means a loud insert or hate loud can or anything like that, but just be advised if you guys are looking for a can for a bolt gun, this may be not the route you want to go. So with that said, gentlemen, I am very pleased with this can so far. And now let's take a close-up look and see some of the cool features of this can, which make it quite a bit different from most everything else on the market. All right, gentlemen, let's take a close-up look at the Anechoic 223 can. First, it comes in a nice little box here. They are made in Hurricane, Utah. Cool city name. Um, got some nice little graphics on there. And it has the nice magnetic catch at the front. I always appreciate that. On the inside, we have our little QR cards for the instruction manual. We have the suppressor itself, of course. And then we also have these spanner wrenches, which I'll show you in a minute here. If I can get them out. Set those aside. So you have uh, one spanner wrench that you can use on the direct thread mount that it comes with. It has these little notches you can see there. This simply indexes on those. And this fits on this, I don't know how many sides, dodecahedron or something, but holds the can still if you need to get some torque on it to tighten that down. Then, both of these guys have a little hex head on the back. This one is a little bit tight. It seems to fit better than this one. But this large torque head here fits in there and takes the end cap on and off. That is a left hand thread end cap, so do be aware of that. Setting these aside, we'll take a look at the body of the suppressor itself. Now, you can see obviously it's got a little bit of oil and whatnot on it from me shooting it and handling it right now, but it's got these really cool looking flutes. These do come in a couple of different colors. Obviously this one is the uh, Coyote Brown, I think they call it. I love the uh, tactical peanut butter look. You can see the logo on there. Very lightweight, this thing is on my kitchen scale, 9.2 ounces. It is 1.6 inches wide, and it is six and five eighths inches long. So not a K can, but also not a super long can. Certainly very lightweight, and a really cool looking suppressor. Now, the most interesting thing about this suppressor that really separates it from the pack is the fact that it is user serviceable. And what that means, and I'll demonstrate in a moment here, is that you can take this whole thing apart and clean it. So if you want to shoot this thing, um, especially on something like a 22 rimfire, those rounds are notorious for gumming up suppressors very quickly. And that is why most 22 rimfire suppressors, most dedicated rimfire suppressors are user serviceable. Now, for the most part, on rifle cans, most people these days aren't super concerned with that. Um, I've never had an issue so far with my suppressors, and there are some things you can do to clean um, a fully welded can. For instance, here we have the Diligent Defense Enticer S Titanium. You can see that these are almost identical in length and size. They're the same width, and they're almost the same weight, just slightly longer on the diligent defense, but this can does not come apart. It does have threaded end caps and rear hub, of course, so you can take those off. Then you can soak the baffles, uh, the whole can really, in some different chemical solutions if you want to clean it. But it is definitely easier, I will say, to clean a can like this, where you can take the whole thing apart and throw it in an ultrasonic cleaner and get all that carbon and buildup off. So, we will now take a look at what it looks like 
taken apart. I won't show you that for the sake of our YouTube overlords, but we'll break it down and show you guys what the insides look like. Gentlemen, let's look at the disassembled Anacoic 223 can for our viewing pleasure. Of course, I'm not going to show you how to take it apart for YouTube's sake, but in the rear it is hub threaded, comes with a half by 28 direct thread mount, so that simply unscrews on that end. On this end, you have your nice coarsely threaded end cap. Uh, you can see again up close here how oversized that bore is. And that is, I think, for a couple reasons. One, it's to reduce your back pressure. But two, it's to interface with this nice big boy uh, torque bit they give you. You simply pop that in there. And I should note that this is a left-hand thread, so it screws on the reverse way of most things. And if you don't remember that, you will simply tighten it down further. Ask me how I know. Now, the other unique feature is you can see all these uh, radial vents here, if you will. I don't know if they do much for braking as far as uh, reducing recoil. They might do a little bit, but uh, they also are such that I believe they self-tighten um, that threaded end cap there. So, nice touch. The body, of course, is a titanium tube. You got those nice flutes that we talked about. Looks cool. And then we'll get to the uh, the heart of it. And here we have a stainless steel blast chamber and a stainless steel blast baffle. Now, um, you can see here that my parts are slightly dirty and that is because they spent about 15 minutes in an ultrasonic cleaner. Of course, that is the really nice part about this Anacoic can. It's fully disassemblable, which means that you can take it apart and clean all your parts in a ultrasonic cleaner. So here I simply uh, did a quick and dirty clean. You can see there's still some residue but there's no buildup in it or anything like that. It is totally um, cosmetic if you will. This is just some residue. So what you get from this stainless steel blast baffle and blast chamber is you get of course a more durable suppressor. Titanium is fantastic and that is a strong and lightweight metal. However, it does not have quite the durability of steel when it comes to high temperature. So I think it was a very smart call on Anacoic's choice to make this first bit of the can out of stainless steel. Of course, it also has that nice uh, raw heat treated look, which I think is pretty cool. It's kind of a coppery color. So again, great looking can. Now, you can also see too how deep this blast chamber is. Um, it is quite a good length, so I'll be interested to see if my long Griffin flash hider from my 14.5 pin and weld fits on that with the standard plan A mount, or if I need to run the longer mount, but I suspect I might be able to get it to work with the standard mount due to that depth right there. So we'll see how that goes. Now we get to the uh, rest of the baffles themselves. You can see obviously there are three and they are all made of titanium. Now you can obviously note the uh, holes, the belly buttons as the instruction manual calls them, and they simply, and the instructions call for the belly buttons to be towards the rifle end of the can. So you simply stack them all like this. And that is what your baffle stack looks like. So, what I will be very interested to note is if the way you reassemble the can has any impact on your accuracy. Typically, when you have a um, standard suppressor with uh, clipped baffles, which is what most of them are these days, the clips are all lined up, and that is for the... Uh, internal harmonics, I guess you'd say. I'm not a, not a rocket surgeon, but it has something to do with the uh, flow of the projectile through the can. So what I'll be interested to note, and I will definitely test, is if I zero the rifle with the blast baffles 
or the blast baffle and the rest of the baffles in a certain configuration and then clean it and put it back together without taking care to make sure everything is lined up the same way. I'll be very interested to see if the accuracy changes at all from that. So that will be, of course, an interesting experiment. The other thing to note too is that this thing only has four total baffles, which compared to a similar can, here we have my Diligent Defense Enticer S also in titanium. Um, you can see here that they are, if we screw that back together, almost exactly the same length. However, if you count the baffles on this one, it's got seven. So that definitely adds to the fact that this one is quieter. However, as we mentioned, it certainly is a high back pressure can. This one is much more pleasant to shoot on a semi-automatic weapon. So, interesting. We'll see how things shake out, but appreciate the expanded look, gentlemen. So let's get back to our finale. All right, gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Anechoic 223 suppressor here. I think it's a really cool can. I think that the fact that it is user serviceable and a flow-through type can is really unique. I don't know of any other suppressors out there that do that. Uh, user serviceable cans, I will say, are definitely um, not as much the norm these days. Most people just run their suppressors as is and maybe clean them. I haven't cleaned any of my centerfire uh, fully sealed suppressors, but some people do like to. I know once you get up into the tens of thousands of rounds, it certainly does start to make an impact on your performance. I will say too, that with the flow through elements that we saw in there, those little uh, belly buttons, if you will, that they call them, that obviously is something that could start to get clogged over time. So that would probably increase your suppression a little bit, but would decrease or rather increase as well your blowback. So the fact that you can take this thing fully apart, if those things were totally crusted over, you could just take a dental pick or something and punch right through that, soak them in an ultrasonic and get this thing back to new. It's a pretty cool feature. Um, smart idea would be to weigh this thing when you get it. Mine, like I said, was 9.2 ounces. Um, so whenever you add a couple ounces of weight, kind of depends from manufacturer to manufacturer how much they recommend before you clean it. But generally within an ounce or two of weight uh, of buildup, it would be a good idea to clean this thing out. So that is definitely something that we will look at down the line. I'm excited to keep running this thing. It is definitely probably my coolest looking suppressor. I really am happy with how it's performed so far. And I'll be very excited to see how it continues for the full review process. So gentlemen, with that, I will let you guys go. But as always, repent and be baptized, shoot, move, and communicate, and I'll see you next time.